Hello guys. Welcome to Diablo the Primordial. This video is the continuation video after an easy victory. So if you have not watched it, then please watch it. The link is in the description. And please check out my second channel Top Anime Sensei for the light novel of Tensura. So without any further delay let's start. But before we start please like, subscribe and press the bell icon so you don't miss the updates. Its crude performance couldn't be compared with the ultimate skill created by Kondo Soul. This was the reason why Carrera, whose energy should be overwhelmingly smaller, succeeded in nullifying Kondo's bullets. H, this doesn't work either, huh? Kondo clicked his tongue while trying to shoot energy bullets. As a result of calmly analyzing the combat, Kondo understood that he couldn't win. If that were the case, he had no other choice but to fight with the full extent of his power in order to accomplish Velda's order. In contrast, Veldora still had strength to spare. Kuhahaha. You seem to have quite a wonderful personality, but in the end, you're just a temporary one. It's reasonable that you are unable to demonstrate your original strength with an imitation ultimate gift rather than the ultimate skill born from your soul. Veldora told Kondo while laughing. Kondo's strength was genuine, but his current body was a temporary one. Not to mention, he wasn't worth considering as he had no soul. That's why Veldora did various things such as observation, gathering information and so on. Kondo was a soulless doll given a temporary ego. Even so, he inherited his original self's advanced combat techniques and used his ultimate skill even though it was a degraded version of it. Although the concept was different to the pseudo-core Rimuru made, it was a very interesting mechanism. Foo foo foo, if I were to analyze this mechanism and teach it to Rimuru, he will certainly be grateful to me. As Ramirez Shisho, it will be fun to research it together. I'd like to have at least one sample, well. As were his thoughts as he ignored the fight. So, when Diablo easily ended Damrata, Veldora kept fighting Kondo without killing him. Hmm. That Diablo, it seems he has ended it quickly. Then, if I don't end this too, the fact that I'm loafing around will get exposed. Veldora lightheartedly thought so, but that judgment was a bit too late. I see. Then, as expected, there's only one way I shall take. Kondo decided without hesitation and executed it. Veldora was powerful, and he had realized that he couldn't win even before fighting. For him to be able to deal a blow to Veldora's main body before him while he was still alive was the result of multiple strokes of good luck. That's why Kondo faithfully carried out the order. Overdrive. Overdrive. In other words, it was a self-destruction. Velda confirmed that Kondo entered self-destruct mode and muttered, that will do. He looked around and smirked. What's so funny? Milam's sword approached Velda, but it was easily parried by Velda's divine sword abyss. Velda's skill had reached a terrifying level to the extent that he could fight several people even with the inferior snake sword. Now that the superiority in weapons was gone, Milam couldn't reach Velda even though her strength had increased. And, Chloe was also unable to demonstrate her true strength. There was one reason. It was because she felt an uncomfortable feeling with Velda's abilities. Chloe always acted carefully. She wouldn't take action like fighting with all her strength so that she could respond in any way depending on the situation. Her basic style was to fight while using future foresight of ultimate skill time space god Yug Sothoth. However, Chloe was unable to recall future memories right now. That meant that even if something were to happen, she couldn't escape to the past. Is there a barrier that impedes certain abilities in heaven? Or, is it Velda's inherent skill? She verified that the other abilities could be activated without any problem and presumed that it was probably a skill that interfered with movement between space-time. In other words, it meant that she couldn't escape from this space with transfer. Perhaps the only way to get in and out was by passing through the gate. The angels who were spiritual life form might have been able to return directly after registering heaven as their base. However, the intruders couldn't escape. I wonder, is this some kind of trap to make us unable to escape? When Chloe thought so, Velda opened his mouth as if answering that. As expected of the pinnacle beings of this world. For you guys to oppose me this far. All right, I suppose I have to show you what I can really do soon. However, Kondo turned into light particles and became a small round orb. The light particles were converging towards the center and suddenly reversed. A small sun appeared in heaven due to the rampage of super high dense energy accompanied with intense lights. Uo. Veldora fully released his magic power to suppress the sun and barely maintained its state just before it exploded. 
However, Veldora's complexion worsened as he suppressed the sun and felt the pressure increasing steadily. However, I shall be the opponent for those who survived this explosion. Saying so, Velda embraced Milam forcibly. What are you trying to do? Milam struggled while shouting, but the jet black chains that came out from Velda's left hand twined around and sealed her movement. Dark Nebula, the chains made with dark matter that absorbs all energy. Even this explosion, even Milam's raging power, was not enough to destroy these chains, it was God's chains that was more powerful than Gleipnir, which succeeded in sealing de Gruel in the past. With these chains, Milam and Velda would be completely protected from the explosion. However, the other people would be exposed to a direct hit from the explosion. A raging explosion of energy equivalent to ten awakened demon lords, would spread a transcendental destruction which surpassed true dragons even though just for a moment. Since it was destruction by sheer force, energy greater than it was needed in order to defend against it. You fool. If only you ended it immediately. Velzard angrily moved. Before the power suppressed by Velda was unleashed, she intended to cooperate to put it out. The other people also tried to move at the same time, but... Don't misunderstand my words, okay? The explosion I mentioned is the one I'll start up over here. Rudra, I wonder why you could defy me, but that doesn't matter anymore. I wanted to investigate the cause, but you have your work anyway. Saying so, Velda looked at Rudra while sprouting a wicked smile. It can't be you bastard. Guy shouted. He ignored Rudra and tried to go towards Velda, but he was too late. Goodbye, Rudra. Starbreaker, activate. At that moment, everyone was still as if time had stopped. Even the explosion from Kondo's self-destruction was expected to be strong enough to inflict a massive damage even to true dragons if supposedly energy of a true dragon class was to break through its limits and explode. It was predicted to produce a tremendous destruction beyond imagination. Moreover, the skill and magic of transfer series were sealed off in this heaven, there was no escape. Guy, Velgrind, and Chloe, the three of them surrounded Rudra simultaneously. Velzard, who was heading towards Veldora, also turned towards Velda after seeing the demons moving to support Veldora and the four people desperately began to offset the energy, but the process leading to the explosion was faster. Rudra. Damn it, things turned out like this. I guess it can't be helped, guy. It seems I can't settle my score with you. Rudra helplessly laughed. And then he muttered quietly, please survive. Immediately after, Rudra was engulfed in intense lights. Veldora, I leave that one to you. Don't fail, okay. Kuhahaha. Of course, if I fail here, I will be killed by my sisters. While Veldora's carefree laughter echoed, someone appeared among the four people who surrounded Rudra. A. Hey, sensei. When Chloe opened her eyes wide in surprise, the energy that should have exploded was subsided into a small round orb on his palm. Yo, sorry to keep you guys waiting. So, he boldly declared. He ate the mass of energy in his hand with soul consumption, then stealthily poured and isolated it into imaginary space. It seemed that I had appeared as if I were aiming for the right timing, but obviously, I didn't. It was a coincidence. Even though it might not appear so, I was actually busy with various things. Since things inside the labyrinth had settled down, I thought that I would also be going to subjugate Velda, but... For some reason, my energy wasn't recovering, no, I felt that my energy had decreased rather than increase after the recovery. I thought it would be risky to challenge Velda like that, so I decided to recover my energy first. As there were a large number of angels in the sky, I decided to kill and eat them. It could be said that Kumara had great timing as she returned with transfer just at the right moment and so we commenced a simultaneous attack. As the labyrinth army was superior, we were overwhelming in the fight. Firstly, the subordinates of Kumara's pets attacked all at once from the surroundings. As a result, the angel army, which was aiming at the labyrinth's entrance, fell into disorder and a big gap was made. The labyrinth army sortied as if not to miss the timing. After that it became a one-sided fight. It seemed that it was difficult for the angels, who all united under one will and turned into a powerful converging fort to deal with attacks from all directions. The commander seemed to be quite capable, as the angels were shown to be able to denominate into core and switch to intercepting incoming attacks, but the stumble at the beginning was fatal. However, there is a problem before that, the differences in an individual's fighting power was too large. If I might say so myself, everyone from the labyrinth army was strong. 
Among them, Kumara, the four dragon kings, Apito, Trainee San and her sisters were extraordinary. Kumara rampaged as if to relieve her stress. She tore and cut the angels freely with slashing attacks using her tails, with the eight pets spread out to defend her, there was no such thing as letting the enemies live. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you guys have not watched my earlier videos, then please watch them. The links are in the description. And please check out my other channel Top Anime Sensei for the light novel of Tensura. And don't forget to like, subscribe and press the bell icon so you don't miss the updates.